Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're doing a bit of a different video. You do, you guys should know that I do like to have battles. In my server itself we had like a battle factory event. This was actually a practice event for like a bigger uh, in the Belgian server. And I participated in the Belgian server as well. Uh, what do I mean with battle factory? Well you've got three sets of every Pokemon where you can choose from and each Pokemon is worth a certain amount of points. The better the Pokemon is, the more points it gets, of course. So you got like a very... How do I say this? A very different team than any regular OU team. As you can clearly see on my team, I've got a Haxorus, a Chandler, a Berserker, a... I forgot what his name. A Burden Pokemon, uh, a Selgar, my bad. Ditto and a Mantine. So yeah, I went pretty balanced I feel I like uh, at first I wanted to do a fire water grass core but drop that because I want a steel type as well but the main idea is quite simple I've got a sash endeavor uh, a Selgor, which has stealth rock I will not endeavor what I'm saying final gamut so this uh, a Selgor is quite easily it's just spikes toxic spikes encore final gambit with a fuga sash encore is for if my opponent wants to set up uh, rocks or wants to set up on himself like dragon dance or something so that we can make him stuck in that move so that he has no other option to but to switch the fun part about this as well is uh, you like I get my hazards off no matter what and I, uh, I like to keep my hazards although Chandler doesn't quite enjoy having those hazards on his side I've got man time with heavy duty boots with defog just take it but the main idea behind the team was a cell gun lead, uh, I need a bulky defogger because I know that a lot of people would take uh, Fishy as well. What's his name again? Draco Fish. So I wanted to something to be able to switch in. Fish's rent and Manta was fine enough. I can and with the heavy duty boots, it doesn't take stealth rock damage, which makes it uh, somewhat a better switching for it. Choice Band is, of course, still really scary. Uh, I've got double Scarf, I've got Scarf Chandler and Scarf Ditto, that's good. Scarf Ditto is mainly because I know Pokemon uh, people want, like to set up as well. So like having a Scarf Ditto to revenge sweep them is always great to have. And then I've got Haxorus with a Lumberry, uh, just a Dragon Dance set, just to hit people very hard when needed. Oh yeah, and the Berserker is a Salt Fest. Berserker actually did a lot of work in my first battle. Um, it was unfortunate that I didn't record that one. I actually forgot that I wanted to record these. But this is the second round anyway. And like let's just get into it. So good luck to so good luck to Grave, of course. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil the outcome of this battle, but I hope you guys definitely will enjoy this. I tried to edit them down as a more like a replay than anything else, because I think that'd be more fun than watching me click the buttons as well. So as you see, he leads off with Steelix as I lead with the Selgor. Uh, I made him shiny because I like shiny Selgor. He's nice and shiny. So I'm checking off his team and checking what uh, his rock setter and his rapid spin uh, pool could be. And like I believe he's going for stealth rock or a setup move. I'm not believing he's gonna attack me in turn one. So I'm just going for the spikes because toxic spikes can be put away because of the salazzle, which uh, could be quite annoying. As you see here, I'm just going for the spikes, put them up. Steelix, of course, being way, way slower than the Selgor, going for this move, goes for the Stealth Rock. So I'm like, hell yeah, this is a free Encore, making him switch out, having a second layer of spikes as well. And maybe final gambiting something. So yeah, here we go. Nice Encore right there. Easiest Encore of my life. Uh, so he has to go for Stealth Rock again, allowing me to have a second layer of spikes, which is always really great. The Salazzle set could be like, uh, there's two Black Sludge sets and one uh, Focus Sash set, so I definitely wanted to have spikes up. If possible, maybe put up the Toxic Spike. But then this thing came in. Tokis, um, I was kind of scared of because it could have Defog, could have Nasty Plot. And like, I was very afraid of it because like, way dealing of it was my Assault Fest Berserker. So I just went for the play of Final Gambit in this Tokis because... Well, in my opinion, it's the best play because like putting this uh, toolkit at low health as possible and as you see, he's max HP because that's why he left with a few uh, HP left. So Defog won't work uh, with Final Gambit, but he goes for Flame Throw, making me think. Uh, so that is, or it is a crit toolkit 
or it is uh, Nasty Pro Tukis. So here I'm contemplating in what Pokemon to go to because I still don't know if Tukis is fast. Uh, so he's max HP, but I don't know if he's max uh, speed as well. Because uh, I don't know exactly the spread of my Haxorus. I actually kind of forgot, but apparently I am adamant. So I don't know the spread of my Haxorus, but then I go for Berserker because Flamethrower won't kill me with the Assault Vest. I can see I could U-turn out. Actually, U-turn would have been probably the better play, but uh, no, definitely not. If he roosted, it was not the better play. Uh, I went for the Iron Head just to get make sure that this Tokis would go down. Tokis does retreat as you see, uh, but he does bring out the Steelix again. And Steelix, knowing that he Stealth Rock is two possible sets setup or uh, or the Heavy Slam. Like body press set, which means an earthquake as well, uh, which means it gets totally walled by Mantine. So I'm gonna check if he's body press or earthquake by switching out. I'm just clicking U turn because I know I'm faster than the Steelix, it's the best play for me. Because I know close combat in no way in hell would have killed the Steelix yet. Steelix is a bulky boy with a jawline that is, makes Joey Pokemon blush. So yeah, thanks to the heavy duty boots, Mantine is an easy switch in because the rocks don't, uh, don't, don't let him take damage. And I got a free skull which I can just use to kill the Steelix with. Which is really great. All right. But I know that the Steelix probably... Uh, so we see that the Steelix is going for body press. So that means it is uh, the set that I thought. So Stealth Rock, Heavy Slam, Earthquake, Body Press. So it gets utterly walled by my Mantine. Thank God, it's Mantine. But... Uh, that means we can just go for a, a Scald, or I could make a play by clicking Toxic. Toxic, getting out the gr uh, expecting Grass type to come out, and just being able to like put that on a timer. So like Toxic is gonna be very nice because Eldegoss can have Rapid Spin. That's the thing that frightened me the most because like Rapid Spin means I lose my Stealth Rocks, uh, I lose my Spikes, but he doesn't lose his Stealth Rocks. Which is very scary. So I'm contemplating of switching into my, uh, what's it called, Chandler. And I'm just going into Chandler because I feel that is the best play. Uh, avoiding Rapid Spin. If he does go for the Paralyze or for the Sleep Powder, it's fine. One po one Scarf Pokemon being Paralyzed to Sleep is fine. As long as I can make sure that he doesn't Rapid Spin. He goes for the Sleep Powder, but unfortunately misses. Which is very sad for him. Uh, and now I am contemplating what to do here because like toxic taking damage. I could go for a fire blast uh, I remember seeing like in this free for all itself. I recall uh, I said like I could go for fire blast and maybe burn the Draco fish as the safest play because the elder girls Could would be really a problem if he stayed in So I was like all right. I'm just going for fire blast uh, Even if Draco fish comes in that's fine. That's chip. That's chip with spikes and chip with fire blast I'm just going for it so we hit the Fire Blast, I see, not that much damage of course, not very effective, but we do get the burn! Which is super unfortunate for the Draco Fish, because being an attack setter, his attack is now his attack stat is now halved, which is very poo-poo for him. So yeah, now my Mantine is a uh, very safe switching, so I can just go to my Mantine. So let's go in Mantine. As you see, it's man time. Man time being the pancake that he is. Taking the crunch like a boss, of course, be because the Greek of Fish is burned. Um, because it did so little, I know that it's probably Scarf as well. So uh, I can go for a safe roost here. Uh, just to put, like, man time walls a lot of things on this team. So it's the best play I can possibly do. Goes back to Tukis. Here I am regretting not going for the Skulls, because now the Tukis can go for a free Roost, which is very unfortunate, but uh, it's fine. So what he could do is, uh, he's 100% going to Roost. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go Haxorus, believing that I am the faster than the Tukis, that this is the bulky Tukis set, so that my Poison Jab can kill him even at half, because I'm adamant as well. So I killed the Tukis with Haxorus, with Poison Jab, having enough damage, taking Tukis down, and then I have my Haxorus in, which is always very nice to have. So here we go, here we go, Haxorus, watch below. I take a Stealth Rocks, but I've got Mole Breaker as well, uh, making sure that all the molds is broken. 
he goes for the roost which is a good play by him but me going for that uh, expecting him to do that so I'm just gonna go for the easy poison jab and as you see because we're adamant and we are faster we take down this two kids as well so two kids down is very nice for us and now it's very hard for him to win this because well a burn Draco fish is not really get good elder Goss, that's her name elder Goss is very annoying as well uh here i made a mistake because i forgot i was mole breaker so my attack actually goes through his uh ice head which i could have just attacked him i'm just going to switch to chandler because he's probably salad berry if he belly drums uh that's fine he doesn't get his salad boost yet and my uh channel still outspeeds him and the thing is as well if he subs my channeler is also infiltrator so my channeler is actually the best switch i could possibly have uh, so just being able to win infiltrator to go through screens substitutes anything really which is really great so he does go for the belly drop which is fine belly drop also ice Q's ability makes it so that only physical moves uh works like a, like the ice block only works like physical moves only. so if i attack it with a special attack that means the ice Q's hp is gonna go down so yeah, we're clicking Shadow Ball, and uh, we do manage to take him down, which is really great for us, so very hard for Grave now to do anything really, because uh, I still have like half my team, only the Selgar I don't have. Salazzle comes in, Salazzle dependent on what it is, if it is a Sash set, it won't survive the Shadow Ball, if he is the Black Sludge set, uh, set, he will survive this, but I've still got plenty of Pokemon to deal with the Salazzle. So I'm just going for the Shadow Ball, and as you see in a second, we do take him down. So very, very nice for me. Uh, I've taken down enough Pokemon where I'm like, yeah, I'm guaranteed to win this. Uh, it's very hard to lose this still. He goes out in Drake of Fish, but then he decides to forfeit, which is, well, all in all, a good, like, there was no way he was winning this anymore. We're very unfortunate. Uh, sleep powder miss very unfortunate burn for him but we managed to take out the win and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, i like doing battles i'm like i'm always up for that and if you like the video please like if you have enjoyed the video please like the video i don't know make a comment maybe i should if you want more battles like this because i like doing battles but yeah let me know Bye bye